Uh, this is Parque del Retiro, the Retiro Park in Madrid uh, on a Tuesday lunchtime, about coming up to one o'clock. A beautiful park right in the center of Madrid, sunny day. And the thought that I wanted to share here today, Wusan, our relationship with failure. The question, what is your relationship with failure? And a couple of ideas on failure. One was if, if you don't set yourself big enough goals, you're not going to fail. So to not fail is not a sign of competence. It's a sign that you're not really trying big things. And one of the ideas around failure, I think, if you set out to climb the mountain Tibidabo, which is a 300 meter hill behind Barcelona, you're probably going to succeed, you're probably not going to have any blisters, and you'll come back fine. If you set out to climb Everest, you're going to have a lot of blisters, it's going to take you many years, it's going to be many setbacks. And to climb Everest without ever failing without ever having a blister, without ever having to stop for a couple of days because the weather doesn't allow you to proceed or you don't have the health or you don't have the, the oxygen necessary to proceed, is not a sign of failure. It's a sign that you've set big goals, goals that are dignified, goals that are ambitious, goals that push you to become a better version of yourself. Another perspective on failure comes from baseball, the American sport. And, Baseball in the U.S. is probably the, the most statistically oriented sport of them all. Cricket in the U.K., Australia, New Zealand, India is another sport that generates a lot of statistics. But in, in cricket, one of the key numbers is a baseball hitter's batting average. And if you fail to hit the ball and get on base 70% of the time, you are in the Hall of Fame. To get onto base three out of ten times puts you in the top group of baseball batters in, in history. So to fail 70% of time in baseball is to be a massive success. And what percentage are you looking at in your life? Are you failing one out of two, one out of three, ten percent? Uh, the guy that shared this statistic, Donald Miller, has a new book out now. And one of the things he talked about is life is even more generous than baseball. If you set big goals, failing 90% of the time on big goals is still an enormous success in life. But they've got to be big goals. They've got to be Everest-type goals, not Tibidabo-type goals. And I, I guess I've been thinking a lot about this idea of the, the relationship to the idea of failure because each day a failure today can really feel devastating so you've got to see it in the context of the overall goal uh, and i guess the last video i shared about talking about goals of character goals of ability a big part of character is how you respond when times are difficult it's easy to be generous and honest and kind and caring when you're not in a rush, when you're not under pressure, when the sun is shining, when everything's at peace, when your stomach is full, when you've had a good night's sleep, when the kids are happy. So the question is whether those elements of character hold up when things aren't going your way. And for that to be the case, you've got to be really clear about the relationship you choose to have with success or failure. How is it measured? What does it mean to you? Uh, and I think too often I allow little setbacks in the day to completely derail me. I think in, in many ways it's because I've not consciously thought about how failure plays a role in a life. And to do little things is to avoid failure. But uh, Nietzsche says, living safely is dangerous living safely you don't grow you don't experience what it is to be alive so i guess the question here is what is your relationship to failure how do you consciously accept that 
if you are setting goals that are dignified of the person that you want to become, that you're not already, you wish to become, uh, you have to consciously accept that setbacks are inevitable. Because if you were already capable of being that person, it wouldn't be a good goal for you. Once you're capable of it, it becomes a goal that's too small for you. Uh, so for me, here in the park on a Tuesday lunchtime, thinking about what relationship I choose to have with failure. And very often, I think my attempt is to avoid any failure whatsoever uh, or any feeling of having failed whatsoever because I guess what's, what's more important about failure is not whether we failed it's the emotional feeling of not being good enough can we stay there and accept that this is a part of a good human life a good human life where you're working on character good human life where you have ambitions and dreams that are beyond your current capability. Because if you have dreams and goals beyond your current capability, it's gonna push you to grow to become a better version of yourself, a better professional, a better person, better able to accept wisdom and input from others. If you're not failing, it's probably not because you're highly competent, it's because your goals are far too small for who you have the potential to become. So, as we're thinking about January 2022, the year to come, I think the themes I've set for this year, one of my reflections is how to become a better friend of short-term setbacks, short-term failures. How to really conceptualize this idea that in baseball, failing 70% of the time puts you in the Hall of Fame. Uh, in sales, we used to have a number in, in the world of insurance, 1831. 18 phone calls equals three meetings equals one sale. So in the world of sales, you're fa failing 17 times out of every 18 to, to close a sale. And the only way to move forward is accept that route, that, that structure. There's, there's nothing I could have done in the time that I was selling insurance to become more efficient. It requires 18 phone calls to set up three meetings to close one sale. Uh, and I think even in AI, LinkedIn, CRM world, those numbers still kind of work. You've got to fail 17 times to succeed that one time. Uh, and it's our capacity to keep going when it feels like it's not progressing that allows you to then become the type of person that you have the capability to become to achieve the biggest goals. So reflection from Retiro Park here this Tuesday afternoon. Hope you're well. Thank you for your subscribes, your likes, your comments, your questions, uh, and emails and comments from you guys is what keeps me inspired to keep making these videos. So thank you for being a part of this community. Have a great one.